So trying to find out what kind of food types the larvae of the European eel are actually capable of dealing with. The role of the evolutionary morphology of vertebrates research group here at Kent University was to find out or to study the feeding performance of these larvae based on their anatomy. Now there is one problem. Um, these larvae, or these so-called leptocephalus larvae, have a feeding apparatus of only one millimeter. So that makes it virtually impossible to measure feeding performances like, for instance, bite force, directly onto the larvae itself. Um, so therefore, we estimated the bite force of these larvae by using computer models that are based on an upscaled three-dimensional reconstruction of the head of these larvae. Now, creating these reconstructions is a very labor-intensive process. First of all, the entire head has to be cut manually into a series of one micrometer thick histological sections. These sections are then stained to enhance the contrast between different tissues and are covered automatically. So in the end, we end up with a series of hundreds of histological slides, which are now ready to be photographed. Each of these images then have to be properly aligned with respect to each other in a three-dimensional space which, unfortunately, is a manual job to obtain an accurate replica of the original larva. Now, in each of these aligned sections, and again using the same 3D computer software, all muscles and skeletal elements are then traced and labeled, which, again, is a manual job, for which the software then generates 3D objects. Now, putting all of these objects together, we get a highly magnified larva. Now, from this highly magnified larva, we can now measure aspects of the muscles and bones, like, for example, the muscle volume, average muscle fiber length, and 3D coordinates of both muscles and bones, that will allow us to define how much force such a system could actually generate. Now, putting all of this data into a computer model, we obtained estimates of bite force, which, uh, which shows us that these larvae are only capable of producing a force of about 50 micronewtons. If you now know that a force of at least 100 micronewtons is required to break prey items that are, for example, surrounded by some sort of exoskeleton, it can be deduced that these larvae are only capable of feeding on soft, gelatinous-like organisms.